This is a video intro of the RD7000 receiver. The RD7000 receiver by Radio Detection is sold in four models. The PL and the TL models will do fault locating. The DL and the SL are simpler models. Now I'm looking at the DL model right now. This DL model has five active frequencies, four SON frequencies, and three passive frequencies. That means there's five frequencies dedicated uh, for locating utility lines using a transmitter. There's four frequencies that you can utilize to pick up SONs, sewer SONs. SONs are little battery operated beacons that you can put on the front of a sewer cleaning machine or they're on the front of sewer cameras and they allow you to locate non-metallic pipes. And the passive frequencies allow you to scan an area without using a transmitter. So the first passive frequency is power mode. Power mode picks up anything with 60 hertz on it. Most all power lines have 60 hertz on them, but almost everything metallic has some level of 60 hertz on it. So it's good to passively scan an area using the power mode to make sure that everything's been located. If something's been missed, you may be able to pick it up on power mode or radio mode. Radio mode is another passive frequency that allows you to scan an area. Radio mode picks up anything with a radio signal on it. Almost everything metallic out there picks up some radio station signals, satellite signals, and various radio signals bouncing off of them. And so the radio mode will tell you if something's buried there. It won't allow you to get a depth reading on that mode, but you'll still be able to determine that there is something underneath the receiver. And the last one on the DL series is CPS mode. CPS mode only comes on the DL RD7000 or the RD8000 receiver. CPS stands for Cathodic Protection System Mode. Cathodic protection systems are systems that impress DC current onto gas lines or other pipes that they do not want to corrode. So that impressed current takes the place of your transmitter current and allows you to locate that pipe without hooking a transmitter to it. Now on the CPS mode, you'll still get a depth reading, you'll still have arrows to tell you to go left and right, and so a CPS mode is a nice frequency to have if you are a gas company. The first active frequency is a 512 hertz. Now we have a 512 hertz line mode, and then we also have the 512 hertz SON mode to allow us to locate under, um, sewer camera heads or other SONs um, maybe on a uh, jetter machine. And then we also have a 640 line mode, a 640 SON mode, 8 kilohertz line mode, 8 kilohertz SON mode, 33 line mode, 33 SON, 65 kilohertz line mode. Now, if you're a company that never plans on using a sewer SON, we can take off all those SON modes, and so they don't show up on the regular screen like this. And you do that by going into the menu system. Now the menu system can be found with the on-off key. The on-off key, if it's held down, will shut the unit off. But if you just push the on-off key really quick, you will go into a menu where you can control a lot of the options. So the first option on the menu is volume. Now we can go into volume and turn it up or down by pushing the right arrow here. The peak null button also works as your right arrow. The frequency button also works as a left arrow. So I'm going to go into the option of volume here, and as you can see, I'm on level 2. If I wanted to increase that to level 3, I just push the up arrow, and then hit the left arrow once I get to the option I want to select to go back one more step. If I'm done, I can hit it one more time and go back to the regular screen. But I'm going to go back into the menu, and I'm going to go to the next option. The next option is compass. You can turn that compass on the center of the screen on or off. If you don't like the compass, the compass orientates you the direction that the cable or pipe is normally going. It's telling you basically the direction of your magnetic field that you're locating. So if you don't want the compass, we can turn it off by going to the compass menu. Battery type is your next option. You have the option of alkaline, nickel metal hydrate. So make sure if you're changing over to a, the rechargeable pack for the receiver, you change it to nickel metal hydrate. This will allow your battery meter or your battery icon to read correctly. The next option on the menu is strike alert. Strike alert is an alarm that will go off whenever you're near a shallow power line 
while you use while you are using the power mode. So strike alert can be turned on by going into it here on the menu feature. The next option is frequency. This is where we go to turn on or off all of our frequencies. So if I want to go ahead and turn off those sawn frequencies that we saw on the original screen, I can go into the frequency option on the menu and scroll up until I see the 512 hertz sawned icon. Go into that by hitting the right arrow again, toggle it from on to off, and then get back out of it by hitting the left arrow. Now I'll toggle up to the next frequency, there's 640 line mode. I'll go ahead and turn that one off too. Scroll up to the next one, there's 640 sawn mode. I'm going to go ahead and toggle into that, hit the down arrow, turn it off, hit the left arrow to get back out of it, go up to the next one, 8 kilohertz line mode, we'll go ahead and leave that one on there. 8 kilohertz sawn mode, I'll go ahead and toggle that one off. And 33 line mode, we'll leave that one on. And the next option is 33 sawn mode. I will take that off of there. And the next one is 65 line mode. We'll go ahead and leave that one on. So we also can turn off our passive frequencies like power mode, radio mode, and CPS mode if we plan on not using them. So now when I go back to the regular screen and I scroll through my frequencies, you'll see I will only be able to view the, now the power mode, radio mode, CPS mode, 512 li line mode, 8 kilohertz line mode, 33 line mode, and 65. All the other frequencies have been turned off. Of course, I can turn them back on whenever I want to, but on the regular screen here, I won't have to have the inconvenience of scrolling through them when I want to get to the right frequency. If you go through the frequencies and you accidentally pass the one frequency that you wanted to use. You don't have to scroll all the way through the menu again. You can hold down the F key, hit the down arrow, and go back. Now the other things on the menu are antenna configuration. The antenna configuration will shut off the null arrows that show up on the peak and null response. And so the antenna configuration is found over here on the right. Right now we're on a peak response. That means wherever we get the highest signal, our numbers will climb. And so when we get the highest peak response, we'll get the highest number and the highest bar graph reaction. Now peak response is always on. You cannot turn that off. But the next option, the next antenna configuration is peak and null combined. The peak and null combined mode will use the peak mode, so you're still looking for the highest number and the highest bar graph reaction but it will also give you directional arrows. So those directional arrows will guide you left and right depending on where you are from the target line. If you do not want to use the directional arrows, we can toggle this mode off. We can turn it off completely in the menu system so somebody can, is forced basically to use the peak mode because really the best way to locate is using the peak response. So that's your antenna configuration. If I go into that, there's your peak null option. I can turn it off. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it on. So the next option is power. Now you want to make sure that this stays on 60 hertz for the United States. In other countries, they use the 50 hertz. Now uh, we alternate at uh, uh, our cycle power at 60 hertz. So if you have this accidentally on the 50 hertz, it would not pick up power lines and it would have a hard time picking up CPS mode as well. So I'll leave that on 60. Now the last option, let's see, I've got a couple more to go through here. Power mode. The next option is language if you want to change it from English to another language. Calibration. This will give me the last date and month, month and year right there that it was checked for calibration. So January 2014. Now I can manually calibrate this um, or we can electronically cal calibrate it. To manually have a calibration check done, you'd have to send it to radio detection. But you can electronically check the calibration using the eCal e -cal service that radio detection provides. You would have to download the software from their website, and it's a fairly simple process to do. You just need to hook up the USB cable that the unit comes with to the USB port found inside the battery compartment.
So, the remaining options on the menu system is units. So if you want to use the metric system instead of feet and inches, the imperial system, we can change it here to the metric. So that's everything in the menu. Once you get the menu set to where you want it to go, all the options on the regular screen here will stay that way. They'll be saved on shutdown. You don't have to go through and set them up again. So on the screen we see the battery life. We see the sensitivity level. This is the speaker volume, which is turned up all the way now. We have a compass orientating us the direction of our locate. We'll have arrows to tell us to go left and right and a peak response with the numbers and a depth reading on the bottom right hand corner and this is the frequency that we're using. The first thing you want to do when you start up your locator is match up the frequencies. So we've hooked up our transmitter on 8 kilohertz and we want to match up to that same frequency 8 kilohertz on our receiver. Now on the receiver we have three passive frequencies power, radio, and CPS mode that won't use the transmitter and then we have the five transmitter frequencies that we went through earlier 512, 8, 33, and 65. Now I have the transmitter on 8 so I'm just going to toggle to 8 kilohertz and once I get there you can see I'm picking up signal. I'm in a peak response which means wherever I get the highest number in the highest bar graph reaction that's when I'm directly over the line. Now I can toggle to a peak null response combined by changing this icon here on the right side and pushing on this button. So now I'm in a peak and a null combined response which has an upward and a downward hill icon. The peak and null response means I can follow the numbers and the arrows to determine where the highest magnetic field signal is. So wherever you get the highest number here on the screen that's where it should be and the bar graph goes up and down and saves a tick mark where it gets its highest response so you know immediately when you've passed your peak response. Arrows telling me to go left and right and they're distance arrows so they get smaller as they get closer to that line. The depth reading should also show up automatically when you're over the line. If your compass is nice and straight if your peak and null are also lined up your depth reading should be right on the money and so as you can see when I get off to the side and my compass gets crooked the depth disappears but if my compass is straight and I'm getting close to the line the depth shows up and then I can use the depth as a way to determine where that line is because wherever you get your shallowest depth you should be directly over the top of that line you can see when I get off to the side it gets deeper when I get over the top of my signal it gets shallower. So the compass is trying to orientate you the direction of your magnetic field or the signal that you're picking up. So if you're not facing the right way you'll know it because the compass will be crooked. Battery life is found over here. Your sensitivity level is found right underneath it. The sensitivity level will have to be adjusted up or down depending on how much signal you're picking up. The up down arrows here will control that. So if I'm picking up too much signal from the transmitter, I'll know it because I'll hit 99.9 .9, and that's as high as the scale goes on the screen. I don't want to hit 99.9 .9 because then I won't be able to determine exactly where the peak response is. So by pushing the down arrow, it will automatically adjust. It will bring that 48 down to whatever it should be. It will bring this number here down to the 50 percentile range. You can see how quick it is because it's automatic. You just have to tell it to go down. Same is true as if I was too low on my signal strength. If I hardly was picking up any signal at all from the transmitter, I can increase my sensitivity level on the receiver by pushing the up arrow. And you can see it automatically adjusted to the 50 percentile range. Now I get a good response and I can tell exactly where the magnetic field is greatest. There's an automatic backlight that will turn on by that little photocell there. It's on right now. So that's the basics of the RD7000 receiver. If you need an explanation on how to locate a sewer sound, consult our video online. If you have any other questions, please feel free to contact us by email or phone.